Come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with corn and soybean experts about best practices in pest control, ag issues, and how growers can get more from every acre. All you need is a minute. If you can't tell your stink bugs from your Japanese beetles, join me on this episode of The Minute. Entomologist Wayne Bailey of the University of Missouri and I will be examining some of these insects by hand to help us identify those tiny pests that can do big damage. Wayne, thanks so much for having us here. Pleasure having you here today. Talking about insect pest identification. How important is correct insect pest identification in your management program, say in determining preventive or rescue treatment? I think it's very important. We certainly, we can have insects that look alike, but each insect species may react differently to different pesticides or control actions that we might enforce on them to try to modify that population to a lower level. And so it helps you make the correct treatment choice, even whether you're going to treat or not? Oh, well, certainly. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but certainly insect ID is one of those essential components that we need to have there. And could you just give us a definition of the difference between rescue and preventive treatment? Yes, preventive treatment is where we either have not, do not have a population yet or we have a population that's building and we're going to put a measure in place to keep that population low. With the rescue treatment, we've reached economic threshold. That population is moving towards the break-even point of the economic injury level, and so we want to suppress that population back down below the economic thresholds so that we can manage that insect more effectively. And it's important for growers to contact folks like you or other consultants to determine the correct economic threshold for their crop and area, right? Yes, it depends on where you are in the state. Uh, depends on where you are in the United States, in fact, as to what, uh, what your threshold might be because there's a lot of different factors that influence the economic threshold and the economic injury level. So when you're trying to identify uh, the correct insect pest, what are some of the factors you look for? Well, we do look at the, at the whole insect. We, we want to know, uh, is, it, is it a beetle, is it a worm, is it some other type of insect that might be there? Uh, so we, first of all, we'll look at that, but commodity is very important. We need to know if, what crop it's coming from. Time of the year is important. The stage of the insect, are they all one size or are there different sizes there? Certainly the same thing with the crop. We'd like to know, is it reproductive or is it back vegetative yet? And so all those factors come into account when we, we do that. Also, whether the weather's there, if we're under drought stress versus very wet conditions or normal conditions. And once you have an insect specimen, uh, how do you identify the different sections of the insect and how does that help you? Well, we consider there's three sections. There's a head region, there's a thorax, which has the legs on it, and there's an abdomen. With the head, we're gonna look at different characteristics like the color of the head, is it mottled? Uh, is, does it have sutures on it? Um, and what type of mouth part does it have is very important. Is it a chewing mouth part or is it a piercing sucking mouth part or something else that might be that there are about four or five different styles. Then we're gonna look at the body for the legs. Are there bandings, are the colors different on the legs? Uh, is there some characteristic there that distinguishes it from another insect? And the same thing with the abdomen. Are there spots, you know, um, are there some structures maybe one insect has, the other doesn't. So we look at all the whole insect when we're trying to determine what it might be. And uh, would you mind showing us some of those specimens now? No, it would be a pleasure to do so. Thank you, Wayne. So why don't we start off with the stink bug? That sounds great. So could you give us some of the distinguishing characteristics for a stink bug? Well, first of all, stink bugs are in pinnatomids, which have a shield shape. Mm -hmm. And so they have piercing sucking mouth parts, they have the distinct shield shape, and they have five segmented antenna. Sometimes, such as on the green, those antenna will be banded and we can tell the species from that. But on the brown, so they're pretty much the same color, but there are still five segments within that antenna. Well, next, let's take a look at these Japanese beetles, shall we? All right. What are their distinguishing characteristics? Well, when we see Japanese beetle, the first thing we look for is the emerald green color, mm -hmm. the bronze wing covers, and then the most distinguishing characteristic is a series of 12 white dots along the shell. They're actually white tufts of hair. Mm -hmm. We have five down each side and two on the back that sort of look like tail lights on the insect. And uh, when with treatment, is rescue or preventive the most effective treatment? Usually it's, it's rescue. Uh, most of the time we have to wait for the populations to build to that economic threshold. They do so slowly, but over the years they will build up in an area and, and kind of get higher and higher until some of the, the, the biological agents come in and kind of lower them back down. Right now, through most of Missouri, 
we have populations that are still in the colonization stage, and so they keep increasing each year. And we're hearing more and more as they move from St. Louis, where they've been since 1934, all the way up to Kansas City and to the western part of the state. Wayne, would you tell us about the green clover worm again, please? Yes, the green clover worm is a, is, is a um, the moth itself is black and deltoid shaped. Uh, we see it in the soybean fields, a very rapid flower, hard to capture. The larva is green in color, has a silver band down each side or a faint silver band. It is one that likes to react when you pick it up by, by kind of doing a little dance to avoid you. Just jumped right Just from jumped my right. palm into my finger to try and avoid me. And it's one that we like to have around in, in low numbers. It carries a fungus that's beneficial, so we want that to be around for, to control other insects. But it is uh, one that can defoliate, but usually it's parasitized pretty heavily. It has the fungal pathogen that can kill it, and so there's a lot of factors that, that cause the mortality of this. So it's not a real problem to us. And as I said, it does serve as a reservoir host for as a beneficial insect for other pathogens. Wayne, would you go over the key indicators here for the bean leaf beetle? Certainly. The, the, the bean leaf beetle has one identifying characteristic that we always use, and that's a black triangle right behind the head of the insect. Now, it usually has four spots and a stripe up each side, but it doesn't have to have that to be a bean leaf beetle. It has to have the black triangle, and that tells us that, that it is a bean leaf beetle versus a lot of other beetles that can be in the field early season. Wayne, what do we have right here? That's a fall armyworm larvae. Mm -hmm. And a couple of other worms in here. And Those they are, are both corn earworms. Okay, so tell us about this one. Well, we can always identify fall armyworm by looking at the eighth segment. There's about nine or 10 segments on a worm. This is right near the tail end of the worm. There's four black bumps that are in a square pattern. They're larger than any other coloration on that worm, any other bumps on the worm. And so it's very easy to, easy to tell, even from very small larvae up to fully grown larvae, that we have a fall armyworm by looking at those four bumps. So we have a couple of other worms in here. Could you tell us about them? Well, they are corn earworm larvae. They're pretty early in stars, and they still have the black spots on them up and down the body. Uh, what we would really look for on this insect is to look at the head sutures and the head color. It can vary somewhat in color, but it will have a Y-shaped pattern on the head is what we look for with this particular insect. I notice when I touch it, it goes into a kind of a hard shape. Right, it will go into a C-shaped kind of protective uh, pose that that uh, prevents it from being pulled out of the ear by birds and things like that that might feed on the tip of the ear. And the common stock borer. Yes, this is a late instar of the common stock borer. The common stock borer is a moth that has one generation per year. It is a stem boring insect that can get into corn and causes problems. What happens is that they lay their eggs in weedy patches like wire stem muley, common ragweed, giant ragweed. If you plant corn into that field the next spring, then these will come out, they'll feed on the weeds first for two or three instars, and they move to corn plants where they can damage as many as four corn plants by tunneling into the stock itself. What we look for on this would be, in a, a younger instar would be a purple saddle over the cream colored worm. In this one, the saddle fades as it gets to this last instar, and so uh, we, it's kind of lethargic because it's hindering it a pupate. Now Wayne, would you tell us about the western corn rootworm? The western corn rootworm, this is, is the most important rootworm pest in the United States. Uh, lots of loss each year from it. Uh, we have uh, several different control strategies for it, but basically it is a beetle. It'll have a, a green coloration to it, to a yellow coloration. The northern is the other one that we have, and then this one we have lines. On the northern, it's more of a solid green color, where this one has the tan with uh, two dark black lines on it. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty distinctive as, as a rootworm. Wayne, we've got some pretty healthy critters here. Would you tell us about them? Well, these are black cutworm larvae. It's an insect that does cause us lots of problems very early in the spring. Uh, on late planting corn, however, it's not, they come in early in the spring and then the damage is a little later after the moths have laid eggs and we get larvae produced. We have seven different larvae in the life cycle. It's the fourth on that cut corn plants and those are ones that are really important. Oftentimes we can have dingy cutworm and black cutworm in, this, in the same field or we may have just one or the other but they may occur at the same time in the area. So we need to know what we're treating. How hard is it to tell them apart? Well, they, they look very similar. They can have the same color patterns. 
Uh, what we do look for is that they have four pairs of pro legs, abdominal pro legs, and one pair of anal pro legs. So there's a series of five on the abdomen. Um, and so that tells us that we have one or other of those two insects. What we really have to do on these insects is get to the microscopic level where you look at each segment. There's gonna be tubercles or round bumps on the, each segment and it'll be in pairs. What we do is we look at the size of those pairs of, of tubercles on one segment. If they are, one's large and one's small, we have a black cutworm. If they're both the same size, we have a dingy cutworm. The dingy cutworm we probably would not treat in most cases. The black cutworm we certainly would because they can cause a lot of cutting of plants and certainly impact yield substantially by the, the cutting activity. So here's a case where correct identification is the difference between treatment and no treatment at all. That's correct. And Wayne, just to summarize, how important is correct insect pest identification in determining the correct treatment, be it uh, rescue or preventive? I think it's a very essential part. Probably the most important part is to know what you're dealing with as an in, for the insect. And once you know that, then you can, all your other options for control and for your control strategies come into place in an IPM program. Thank you so much, we really appreciate it. Thank you. We learned from Wayne today that gathering as much information as possible is essential for proper insect identification to protect your yield potential and ROI. Once you've gathered that information, don't hesitate to contact a local specialist. This is Jake Turner reminding you to stay safe out there. See you down the road when you have a minute.